Ladies and gentlemen, I'll give you a warm welcome on SLTV Lab. My name is Mr. Shadrach Habumelewi. Today I'm going to show you what is blood pressure, what are the factors that affect blood pressure, and how to measure blood pressure, and what we expect to see when we measure blood pressure. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to see how to measure blood pressure. But before we see how to measure it, we have to know what is blood pressure and what are the factors that determine blood pressure. Good, let's see what is blood pressure. Some of you have known blood pressure for so long, but let's see if what you have known is right or wrong. Some of you have been thinking that blood pressure is speed of blood. No, 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 no. Or what we call maraso. No, that is not blood pressure. So, uh, then, if blood pressure is not mufuduko or blood speed, then what is it? Let's see. Actually, blood pressure is force of blood on artery walls. Do you get me? You have to think about pressure. Pressure in physics is force over a surface area. Therefore, blood pressure is force of blood against arterial wall. All force of blood on artery walls. Therefore, you understand it now. It's not the speed of blood on Umuvuduko Amaraso as some people say in their culture. Let's see the factor that determine blood pressure. Those factors include the first one is the blood volume. You wonder, what if blood is too much? Will it lead to high blood pressure or low blood pressure? What if blood is very little? Will it lead to high blood pressure or low blood pressure? It's up to you to determine. Good. The second, the third, and the fourth factors determining blood pressure. Those are heart rate, myocardial contractility, and arterial compliancy. Let's start with heart rate. Heart rate is the number of heartbeats per minute. The number of heartbeats per minute. Then we have to think, what if heart rate is high or low? Will it lead to high blood pressure or low blood pressure? Then myocardial contractility is the ability of myocardium to contract or ability of heart muscles to contract. What if contractility is high or low? Will it lead to high blood pressure or low blood pressure? We will see. Then arterial compliance. Arterial compliance is how easy arteries allow blood to go through or pass through. How easy does artery allow blood to pass through or go through? So what if arterial compliance is low or high? Will it lead to high blood pressure or low blood pressure? We will also determine. So let's see now the fifth and the sixth factors that determine blood pressure. Good, let's see the fifth and the sixth factor determining blood pressure. This, uh, the fifth is blood viscosity, then the sixth is vascular tone. Blood viscosity is how viscous blood is. When I say viscous, if blood is more watery, then blood viscosity is low. If blood is more porridge-like or more viscous, therefore blood viscosity is high. Then you have to think, what if blood viscosity is, is high? Will it lead to high blood pressure or low blood pressure? Good. But don't worry, there will be another video when, when we'll explain more about this. Then, vascular tone. Vascular tone is the tension of a blood vessel. Here we mention artery. What if the tension of artery is high? Will it lead to high blood pressure or low blood pressure? What if the tension or tone is low? 
Will it lead to high blood pressure or low blood pressure? We will find out. Good. Thank you guys. Then let's see practically how to measure blood pressure. Blood pressure. In order to measure blood pressure, you have to introduce yourself to your patients. You tell him or her what you are going to do and who you are. So, welcome. Thanks. Brad, how are you? I'm fine. Okay, good. My name is Mr. Shadra. Yeah. Today I'm going to take your blood pressure. Quite a bit. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. So, good. Another thing you have to make your patients comfortable. You tell your patients, this is not painful, this is not harmful. So that our patients will feel very comfortable. Good. So, guy, this is not painful. Don't worry. Yes. There is no harm. Yeah. Feel comfortable. Okay. Mm -hmm. Another thing, guy, before you do this, you don't do it immediately when a patient comes in. You have to let your patients have a rest for at least 30 minutes. You know, when a, someone has been doing some movement, it might interfere with blood pressure. That is why you have to let your patients rest. It's okay, my patient has rested enough. What we are going to do now is to measure blood pressure. When you are going to measure blood pressure, you need these two tools. This one is a stethoscope. And here is another one called stigma manometer. This stigma manometer has this part called cuff. And it has an anometer. And on this nanometer, you see, this is called air releasing bulb, air releasing node. Here, this is air bulb. You use this in order to pump air into the cuff. You are going to see how to do it. Good. So, on this nanometer, there is a needle within it. This is the one that shows you where blood pressure is. Good. The next step is to check if your cuff is working perfectly. Good. You're pumping air and you see if air is not coming out. Good. Air is not coming out, that's okay. Good. Now it's fine. <clears throat> then you wonder where are we going to put this cuff? This cuff is put around the patient's arm. We say two inches above the cubital fossa, or above the elbow. And this tube case has to point downward. This tube, you don't wrap it this way, no, you wrap it this way. Good, we are done with wrapping the cuff around the patient's arm. You have to make your patient's case, please don't worry. Put your arm down with the rest. Don't worry. The next step is you take your stethoscope. This stethoscope has two earpieces. You put them into your ears. The next step is you will put this drum of your, your stethoscope at the branchial artery. We are going to take blood pressure from the branchial artery. It's the artery that we found within the arm. It is at the anteromedial part of the arm, anteromedial. Here it is anterolateral, this is anteromedial. Good. So the cuff will block circulation within the branchial artery. What you're going to do in order to know if the branchial artery is totally blocked, you have to check the pulse around the radial artery. So when you inflate, you have to check the pulse. So I'm no longer feeling his blood moving into the, uh, the radial artery. Then it's the right moment now to start checking his radial pressure. And blood pressure code. So you release air, 
then you follow the movement of the ego. Good. We are done. You unwrap your cup. Then you tell your patient, thank you. If a patient has a question to ask you, this is the moment to welcome your patient to ask any questions. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I want to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. uh, how is my research? Is it normal? Is it high? Is it pathology? Uh, only I want to know what about of my, my research. Okay. Mm -hmm. I've said you scored one. 125 over 80 milliliter of mercury. Yeah. The normal range for systolic pressure, we, where you score the 25, it's from 90 to 140. So 25, you are within the normal range. Then for the diastolic pressure where you scored 80, it should be below 90, but not also below 60. Between 60 and 90. So you understand now. Yeah. You are in the normal range in both systolic and diastolic pressure. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, and God bless you.